or I, I panic because I don't think I have a video idea, but I do. I have them. They're here. I just, it's my own anxiety getting in the way is basically what I'm saying. Hello everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with my 2024 reading goals. So this year, I'm going into the year with more guidelines than goals, I think is what I've decided. Um, just because like my reading has been taken a dip at the end of 2023. As you guys know, I basically didn't read anything in November. And then um, you will not have seen it yet. But December, I did not read a lot. I did read some, but not a whole lot. And so I'm going into the new year with like, a lot of hope for the things that I want to read. Like I have a lot of things that I'm really excited about and my TBR, which you guys will have not have seen yet, but the TBR for January, I'm very excited about. There's a lot of things on there that I really want to read. And then of course I've got video plans, things like that, but I'm just going into the new year with like a renewed sense of like comfort, I guess. I don't even know if that's the right word, but like I'm basically just going in with like these are what I would love to do, but I'm not going to pressure myself. I never really pressure myself, but I'm definitely not going to pressure myself this year um with what I want to do in 2024. So, I have quite a few goal guidelines, goals if you will, uh for the year, but a lot of them are pretty chill, I feel like. I don't know. Let's let's just dive in, shall we? Let's stop talking and just dive in. <laughs> so the first goal, which I do every single year, is my Goodreads goal. And this year I've actually set it to 50 books, which I think is the lowest it's ever been. Um, not that I don't think I could reach 100, because I do still think that that's a possibility. I just, A, don't want any stress on myself, and B, I just know of a lot of personal things, uh, personal plans that like we have for 2024, and I just know my reading is going to take a hit. And also coming into the new year with not a whole lot of reading mojo or like my reading pace is much slower than it has been the past few years. I knew I was going to plateau at some point. Um, so this is the, this is the end of like 2023, 2024 is kind of where we're going to plateau and read as much as I want to still read a bunch, but just kind of chill, you know, read what I want to read, that kind of thing. So decided to make it 50 books and then if I want to bump it up I can but 50 feels like a really solid number um and there's no pressure on me to read a lot of books so that's what we're going with my second goal kind of ties in a little bit because it's also a goodreads goal and this one is we're going to put it in and then if it feels like too much I'm not going to worry about it but this is to do goodreads reviews so I do put reviews on Goodreads. Um, I, I mean, I do like the star rating for every single book that I finish, but when it comes to like physical reviews and that kind of stuff, I will do it for an art. So I will have like multiple paragraphs and I'll go, I'll dive deep into arcs that I've been given because obviously like that's, you're given an arc in exchange for a review. So I want to give it my all. So when I have reviews like that, I kind of go all in, but I don't review anything else. And I've seen a lot of people who do like one sentence or two sentence reviews, and that seems like something I could do. So I'm hoping to try to review all of the books that I read in the year. Like I said, if this just feels like too much, we're not going to worry about it. But for now, I'm going to go in and do like those one or two sentence reviews just to give it like a couple of thoughts because people, you know, sometimes they go to Goodreads and they go, I can't remember what so and so said. Let me see what they said. And then there's nothing there. There's just like a star rating. So I want to give a little bit of something, even if it's just, like I said, a one or two sentence thing. So we're going to try this and see what happens. <laughs> The next one is that list of books that I want to read in 2024. You guys haven't seen this quite yet, but uh, just because I'm trying to do like end of the year, beginning of 20, end of the year content, and then beginning of 2024 content, and this goes into the 2024 content, so you'll see it in like the later half of January. This video is going to be 15 books that are sequels that I really want to read. So the theme, I always have to have a theme, so the theme for this list is sequels. Now my goal is to read 10 of those, so I'm not planning on reading all 15, that's insane. But 
I have a lot of sequels that I really want to read, especially like I'm really, really good at starting series and not finishing them um, or reading the first book and being like, this is amazing and then not continuing because I have other plans. So this is my way of putting a bunch of series that I personally have a lot of interest in right now and then giving myself the ability to choose from them. So when I have a list of like 10 or 12 books, it feels very constricting and the sense of like... I have to read those in this short amount of time. I don't have any choice. And so by the end of the year, we get to the books that I may not be as excited about. And so I don't want to read those books. Whereas this time around, I'm giving myself 15 to choose from. So I've got some that I may not get to, and that's totally fine. I just want to give myself kind of the choice of what's there. So that's why it's a bigger list, but I'm only going to read 10 of those. So you'll see that video soon, but they're all going to be the second book in a series. The next one is kind of harder to, tr well, I'm going to track it and we'll see what happens, but it's going to be to use my library more. I love my Livy app. I use it all the time. I mean, I'm using my library like audiobook wise every single month, multiple times a month. Like I currently have, I think, two different audiobooks and two different ebooks out from the library right now, ready to go. So I use my library book or I use my library app all the time, but I don't physically go into the library as much as I used to. So, and I think COVID definitely hurt that um, because we moved here like the year before COVID hit. So I had just started to get used to that new library and then everything shut down and I couldn't do that. So I'm trying to revamp from COVID and then all the years after COVID where I just got used to not using it. So my plan is to hopefully get one book physically from the library every month. Um, now I don't mind having an audiobook. You guys know that I like to listen and read physically at the same time. So it can be a book that I may have the audiobook for as well, but I want to at least check out one book every single month from the library. So I'm going to track it, make sure I do that every single month. I've already got my Janu January 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 one ready to go. Actually I've got two in January that I'm hoping will come relatively soon. But I, that's my plan, is to physically go to the library and check out a book, at least one, every single month. This next one is going to be harder to track, but I think it's just going to, it's, it's more of me giving myself the ability um, to do these things. And that is to, if I want to binge a series, binge a series. Like I said earlier when I was talking about sequels, I am so good at reading the first book and then being like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get the second one. I'll get to it next month, but I need to finish what I've already got planned for this month. And then I don't read it and it's multiple months. Like I'm still working on the first, like the two that I'm thinking of is the Fortuna Sworn series and the From Blood and Ash series. Both of those series are books that I've given everything in those series, I think five stars. Um, I don't think I've given anything four stars. I'm trying to, I, I know for a fact From Blood and Ash is all five, but I'm just making sure I think nothing in Fortuna's Warren is four stars. Either way, I really want to continue those series and I keep putting them off because they don't fit into the reading plans that I want. So this past year, when I stumbled across Kingdom of the Wicked and I just kind of let myself binge that series, granted it was only three, but I let myself binge that series was like, the most fun I've had in a long time with a series because I let myself do that. Now I know it's not possible for some things, like there are series that are still coming out and things like that, but with the series that are out, I want to let myself kind of just give myself that it's okay to, if you have the ability to binge it, go ahead and binge it. Cause like, like I said, Fortuna Sworn and From Blood and Ash, I'm using those as like examples for this point, but both of those, I have all of the audiobooks that are currently out on my Audible ready to go. Um, I've been stocking them up over the course of the however many months um, with the freebie ones they give you every month. So I've got them there ready to go. And so I'm really, this is more just me hoping that I can get a feel for this year. And then if I feel like I want to binge something and it doesn't fit in with my plans, that's okay. We'll just rearrange my plans. This will flow into the kind of wanting to let myself read what I want to read rather than what I feel like I need to read. Not that I've ever really pushed myself. If I'm really not feeling a book, I just stop. But like, I am really good at having plans, especially when it comes to vlogs. I have so many vlog ideas rummaging around in here. And so I put them on the calendar. And then when I set it, set it for that date, then I'm like, we can't move that. That's that vlog's got to get done. So I've got to put off this thing so I can finish this vlog. And then the vlog is not really as much fun to do. I did that 
last year actually there was a vlog a second vlog that I was planning for October and I just never did it and I felt so good about that like the fact that I was just like you know what this one just doesn't fit for me and that's okay and so I think letting myself I get so worried that I'm not going to have video ideas so that I use vlogs and then when I can't do the vlogs in the time limit that I have allotted I freak out so or I I panic because I don't think I have a video idea but I do I have them they're here I just it's my own anxiety getting in the way is basically what I'm saying. So this is my way, hopefully, I went on a tangent here, I'm so sorry, but this is my way of hopefully allowing myself to give myself the freedom of if I'm enjoying a series and I really want to pick up the next book, I'm just going to let myself pick up the next book if it's available right away. And I've got like, if I'm waiting for an audiobook or whatever it is, like, it's okay, I can pick it up. And if the video doesn't happen that I want it to happen, like the vlog doesn't happen, I just bump it back a little bit and we still do the vlog but it'll just be in the next month instead of this month and that kind of thing so this one is more of I've put this on myself and so I'm putting this here to allow myself the freedom to have fun okay the next one is one that I'm really hoping to stick to and that is to don't buy as many anticipated releases i will be doing a video later this month where i talk about the books that are coming out in 2024 i've done it last year i did it for the past couple of years where i've got a good list and i keep track of them throughout the year of the books that are coming out in 2024 that i am anticipating well my gut instinct used to be just to go out ahead and purchase them because you know, the pre-sales are great for the author. I want to help support the author, but then I never get to that book. So I'm hoping that this year I will allow myself to, yes, purchase the things that I want to purchase. Like, obviously, I'm going to purchase Crescent City 3. And then there's definitely a couple of other books that are coming out this year that I'm for sure going to purchase. But then there are books that I am interested in reading, but I don't feel the need to own unless I read it and it's amazing. So I'm allowing myself that it's okay, hopefully, not to buy as many things. And if I want to read that book when it comes out, great. I'll find a way to do it via my library or Scribd or something. But I don't have to own it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I've actually gone through my list so far of the books that are coming out in 2024 and actually marked some of the books that I know for a fact I'm interested in, but I don't feel the need to own. So I'm already starting that way so we'll see i'll check in at the end of the year like i said i keep track of everything that comes out this year and if i've bought it and if i've read it so hopefully by the end of the year there's actually like a way to tangibly check if i've done this but i'm hoping to not buy as many anticipated releases unless it's obviously one like there's there's some exceptions to the rule but overall letting myself just read them and that's okay and then maybe i'll get to more of the releases then putting them off and then getting to them like three years later because that's the trend that we're on right now and the very last one is super specific and that's just to start the throne of last series <laughs> so i thought last year was gonna be the year and i never did it um and i love sarah j mass you guys know i'm a huge fan of sarah j mass and in her new kiss and city series she seems to be combining the worlds of all of her series and I know Akatar really well and I don't know a thing about Throne of Glass and the only reason I know that it's kind of included is because I watched I'm sure it was Becca from Back in the Books who did like a whole mass verse video last year when the second Crescent City series Crescent City book came out <laughs> and basically explained all of the little easter eggs from the second book that were attributed to some of the other ones and I definitely missed a good chunk because I hadn't read Throne of Glass and I'm definitely interested in the series. I own the first four included like the prequel so the prequel and the first three and so my goal is to just start the series. I don't have to get very far into it. If I read only one book in the series I'll count this as a win but I want to at least have started the series because it's such a big series and I have a feeling I'm going to really enjoy it because I do love her writing so much and I know that I have to dedicate a good amount of time to the series. Like I know a lot of people say you have to get to the fourth book because that's when the series really starts to pick up and changes into what it actually is. So I am happy to give it the as much time as it needs, but I need to at least start it. And I think the hurdle of starting it is the stress I've got. So I'm hoping to start it. Like I said, I don't care if it's the prequel I start, Assassin's Blade, or if it's the first book, Throne of Glass, but I want to at least have started one book in the series. And hopefully we'll do a, maybe a spoilery vlog book diary on it. We'll see. Let me know if you're interested in that. But that's it. That is a look at 
some of my guidelines slash goals for the year. Like I said, I kind of like there's a lot here, but I'm giving myself I feel like I'm giving myself more grace this year than I have in the past. Um, because I like to put pressure on myself as we all do. We like to put more pressure on ourselves than anyone else is putting pressure on us. So that's what I've got so far. Let me know if you guys have any goals yourself for 2024. I would love to know all of your thoughts down below. But if you like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you like to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links. So check all that out and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Thank you.